Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I think for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, all the Guardians movies are successes, if not outright good movies. I think the first one is still my favorite. But Volume 3 is good, except I have issues with it that don't ruin the experience. It's a recommended movie. It's fun. It, it finishes off the trilogy. Well, there's some amazing cinema, you know, cinematography, and I don't know about the music too much. I've had a issue with some of the music over the three movies, but this movie has got a lot of good going for it, and there's some bad that is compounded by the theme of the uh, movie and the the way the plot develops. So we've got the Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, sometime after, they're in nowhere, the head of a celestial, and they have introduced Adam Waller. Now, I'm all for giving actors playing characters a shot, redoing their origins and stuff. I'm not a stickler for that stuff. I just want to have a good experience and enjoy it. And if it's a good and great movie, even better. But they put Adam Warlock in the movie. And as the movie starts off, Groot, um, Raccoon, Rocket Raccoon is gravely injured. So we're, we're dealing with a chunk of the movie where Rocket is injured. He has to be operated on. Or helped in some way with the medical lab and they can't because there's a kill switch in him because of his creation and it's a good good point in the movie to focus on the flashbacks and find out all about raccoon's past and how he was created but the tone of the movie from beginning to end doesn't just bank on that and the normal interactions of the team. So, for instance, if you're doing this movie and I'm making it up, it starts off, Adam Warlock's introduced, and he, he injures um, Rocket Raccoon, they can't heal him, so they got to get the fail-safe codes to bypass the kill switch so they can heal him. And they would have their interactions and go on their adventure. But here they introduce, reintroduce Gamora, and I don't know why they went this way with her, where she's not comfortable with the group. I get it. She's an alternate version because of all the movies that have come before. And that could be a, a detriment to some of the moviegoers who are jumping on board. Even if you watched all three Guardians movies, you'd still want to know about the history of the movies and Endgame and um, Infinity War. To find out where she fits in. And she's from an alternate universe. And she's with the Ravages. And it was good to see Sylvester Stallone flying in space. He's playing Starhawk. So here's these little gems in here. But they bring her into the team. And it's a constant. You know. Element to the, to the chemistry of the team. That has to be explored. And on it's own. Or in the first movie. Where they did it. It felt organic it felt like you were going through the motions seeing how they all interact and you know you got your humor and your goofiness and some seriousness and it's blended well and music but here like i said you're starting the movie off you introduce adam warlock you injure raccoon they have to get the codes they get gamora seems normal but as she starts interacting with the team and the way this movie progresses I'm going to say it's more harmful because you've got themes in this movie that are dark, deep, um, really hit you in the feels. It goes for your heartstrings. And that balance of comedy and humor and works in almost every Marvel movie. I've said it before. I think in general, all the Marvel movies are pretty decent and you know, they lack in areas and stuff. Some are great, you know, Endgame, Infinity War, Iron Man. It's just, 
but here I am, Volume 3, Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm already a little all over the place. I'm interested in seeing Rocket Raccoon's history and staying in that zone, letting it breathe, and maybe go in a bit of a different direction with this movie. The little bits I know about the director James Gunn getting fired, then getting rehired because of controversy type stuff. I don't know if that's in here. Like, is he overseeing editing? But I would have just mixed it up a little bit more where, or cut things out and streamlined certain aspects of the movie. I, you know, I don't really go into deep plot lines and story and spoilers here and there, but it's a major thing that Rocket's going to die and he keeps getting elevated. His, his threat level is elevated in the sense that he's in danger of dying, he's in danger of dying. Then he gets tossed around like a rag doll and manhandled, and he's still not healed yet. Then you've got Gamora and Adam Warlock. So, like I said, as the movie progresses, you're in the first act, and you're figuring out, oh, what a impactful history for Raccoon, his origin type thing. Then they decide to make Adam Warlock and his mother type Aisha stupid. And Adam Warlock's a, you know, I'm okay with the actor doesn't look the part right away. And, you know, they get to show their acting chops. And it just, you got writing that you're doing. And a character that is really tied to the cosmic landscape of the Marvel Universe with Thanos, and it doesn't feel right, but okay, it's the direction you're going in. Again, when you've got that, and you've got that on your mind, they introduce the high evolutionary. Well, you know, because of the Phil Icebacks and stuff. Again, this is going to be another trade-off of fun movie, but they lacked in the villain. I was kind of intrigued and enjoyed what they did with Guardians 2 with Ego, or, you know, I'm sorry, the general plot, I think it's the, you know, the first, second fucking movie. I, I kind of enjoyed the blend of humor and seriousness and, you know, who the villain's going to be, and it didn't bother me so much as this one. So the high evolutionary, okay, different origin, he's not from Earth. But he's like a lunatic type guy who you don't believe he's gotten in his position, which is, you know, making animals into beings that are functioning, sentient human-like intelligence and even more eventually. And it doesn't feel right. Like when you watch Ragdor and you see some of the collectors, the elders of the universe, they can be eccentric and a little over the top in certain ways, or a little bit too subdued, and well, you can have that range of aspects in him. And he felt out of place in that you're raging around, you've got this intellect, obviously, and when it's revealed through the plot line of a two and a half hour movie, what the ultimate goal is, what raccoon's ultimate fate was how he escaped the initial creation and captive cap you know all that revealing you're still going through the movie with the guardians of the galaxy themes and the interchemistry as me i'm mad at you you're mad at me gamora's irate you know she fucking hates everybody and if you're gonna go through that arc again at the end okay it's it's okay but it didn't feel like it did in the first one where she's an agent of thanos and she's going to, you know, collect an item, whatever. I didn't feel the need for this. Uh, it just feels like there's two different movies crammed together. But, you know, maybe I expected as it, the movie opened up to be a more thoughtful, darker, you know, movie that shows you can't just play songs in space and have a good time. And they compound on it at the end, near the end. And this whole middle section of the movie, it's all over the place. When's Raccoon going to get healed? Is he going to get healed? Is he going to die? Can he withstand minions grabbing him, throwing, dropping him on the floor, moving him around? 
it just it just didn't feel right. And Adam Warlock is his growth as a character is so it's so I don't know unappealing to me. And they make the note, Aisha. I think the uh, the sovereign who created him says something to the effect of, "Oh, um, you you put, you pulled him out of the cocoon too soon." You know, they did a, a end scene or a mid credit scene where they were, they showed a cocoon of Adam Walla. and it's revealed and he's let out too soon, so he's dumb and. It just uh, it didn't feel right where they wanted to go with the character. And again, uh, I'm in a good place. I want to watch Guardians 3. Um, granted, the holiday special things that, you know, are geared for a certain thing. This is the theatrical ending of the trilogy. And I wasn't as wowed. I was a little bit, you know, aggravated at points of what was going on. Like, you're going to let it breathe, and I'm going to really feel what's going on here. There's some deep stuff with animal cruelty, and uh, you can just imagine. And there are things that enter the movie that just make you go, what the fuck is going on? So, for instance, High Evolutionary. Okay, a little off, off kilter here and there. Got life goals and whatever. The motherfucker created a counter-earth. A replica Earth with his animal species and whatever he created. I think they mentioned things like the Animan and there were little Easter eggs in there. And apparently, as he uses this planet and succeeds and fails, he raises the planet. So he must have been populating this planet, watching them grow civilizations. And then what? Raising the planet to send this and rebuilding? How long does this take? When was fucking Rocket made? Why is he yelling at Rocket when he's first created about what was wrong with the fucking violence? And yeah, it's just, it, it was, it fucking confused me and it got me angry. Like, okay, you're creating life to populate a planet. I get it. Or, you know what? I don't know that yet, but okay, you're trying to turn animals into sentient beings and make them, you know, have all the qualities that make us humans and self-reflection and thinking about thinking, all that stuff. Speaking beings. And they're all coming out violent. And where does this connect? Is, is he taking certain test subjects and then putting them on the planet? Because as it's revealed in the flashback, they don't want to go to the colony without perfecting it but when you get there it's a fucking planet it's it's city buildings is people walking around like they've been there for fucking decades so i'm gonna give it that it's decades and what did you do you built the fucking all the buildings and stuff and then you make a remark about raising it to the ground and starting over okay but remember you started this movie it's two and a half hours and i've got racket raccoon who i'm fucking worried about i'm getting to see animal cruelty i'm Finding out why Gamora is just a fucking cunt and her her ice breaking again and Peter's dilemma and some awesome stuff is going on here and there with Drax uh, getting some great stuff and Mantis like stealing the movie almost uh, Nebula's growth and that's why it's an enjoyable recommended movie in in the Guardians of the Galaxy in the Marvel Cinematic Universe but if I'm gonna come on here and really tell you how I feel, yeah, I can watch this again with friends and enjoy it and have a romp. I might turn to my friend every now and then and go, this is fucking silly, this is stupid. And it's not an angry movie, like it's going to get me angry or would I shut it off if I saw it again? I don't know. I don't think I'm watching this one again and again and again. So, three, a two and a half hour movie... It's got some really deep stuff you want to get into and explore, and they do to an extent that's really satisfying, but it's got to put in its music, it's got to put in its jokes, it's got to have little adventures, it's got to have offbeat humor, and it's got to have interchemistry problems, and, and you know, it, 
you got it two and a half hours, and I think you dropped the ball here and there. And some of the things like just started bothering me. S- special effects, all that stuff is just fucking top notch. Space battles, the whole thing. Now, there is one music cue that I thought was fucking great. So, I talked to my friend, you know, as the first movie came out and the second movie, and as much as I enjoyed them, I think the music is overdone and over, just it's too much, and it's setting up scenes. But when I heard uh, Faith No More's uh, We Care A Lot, I gotta admit, I enjoyed it. But, uh, again, you know, you're building on things. I'm immersed in this movie. I'm, yeah, I have expectations from the other movies. And I'm curious where they were going to go with Gamora. So you make that decision. And you're going to tell Rocket's um, history. And you've got some moments of Drax by the end of the movie where um, him and Nebula have really come a long way. And it feels missed opportunities were muddled. Maybe this is an hour and a 50 minute movie where you streamline Gamora's nonsense and um, get Rocket out of his situation sooner. And maybe he tells the people, like, because a lot of this is Rocket doesn't talk about his past. or was, but, he, but you don't even get to know anything because he's injured right away. But as the characters are interacting, he's never talked about it, doesn't talk about it. And we get it from the other movies, and we're going to see that, and it's so impactful, it's so, you know, heart-wrenching, and you you, you got to balance that with some comedy and humor, and I can't get to the next part and wait for it to come up without immersing myself in this and going, oh, the dog talks, you know, it's, you know psychically, and oh, okay, here's some characters I know around the place, and the guy with the whistle and the arrows, he's got to have a little bit of growth, which is fine, and, and for the most part, there are again great moments in this movie. It's a Guardians of the Galaxy romp, but I can't not come out of this a, a little annoyed here and there. And coming off watching some of these other movies and seeing where I don't know, is it debatable or whatever? Like Infinity War and Endgame, or to me, I think. uh amazing movies and when you're dealing with heavy issues and stuff a lot of the marvel movies have such a great balance that i don't really notice it maybe once in a while you roll your eyes like you know too much comedy in ant-man but you kind of expect it and again going into this i'm expecting it with Guardians of the galaxy i know what i'm going to get drax and stuff and they did do a good part where he actually makes sense because um Mantis told him to say exactly these words. He's like, oh, you made sense. And then he pushes it too far. Again, I'm having fun here and there, but you have a villain, your high evolutionary and his minions and the people who work for him. You're going to get to a point in this movie where they turn on him and it's not believable. It's what happened to him. Oh, he's wearing, stra- uh, oh, what was it, like uh, Star Trek. Uh, into dark. One of those Star Trek movies where the guys stretch their skin over their face. So, in one of the reveals, spoiler, when Rocket uh, escaped, he got his four companions, his friends, different type of animals, and he sets them free. But the high evolutionary comes with his, oh, well, guard or whatever, a couple of guards, and he's like, oh, you know, the guy knew you were going to do this. And Rocket fights them, and the four, his four friends are dead, are killed. And Rocket goes bananas and rips his face off. Like, you know, they don't reveal that. It's revealed at the end because they peel his skin off his face. Again, horror, uh, body horror, gore, like, uh, serious fucking themes that are, uh, you know, that are permeating and are bubbling. It doesn't feel right as a mix. It just didn't feel like all the ingredients were made and had a fluid, progressive movie that I was captivated in, you know, what do you want to say, like the, you know, say three parts of a movie type thing, you know, the first, the second part, and you get to the third, 
that you know what's coming, you know. There's that element here, but it feels lost. Like its message is getting diluted in places when it should be really strong. You could make a real serious, real heart-wrenching um, content in here and layer it with the humor that you're known for, but let these moments sit. Let, you know, Gamora feel like she's in place, and even if she is angry, at the end of the fucking movie, she goes back to the Ravagers, and she's smiling and laughing. And I'm like, what the fuck is... I, I didn't understand why you would do it. Yeah, we can write it that way, when she kind of grows with them and says, okay, you know, everything's okay. She smiles. And then... At the end of the movie, she leaves, and um, everybody's leaving, and they're going to make a new group. They make um, Rocket Captain, obviously. Spoilers, he fucking survives, like everybody does. And where is this main villain? It feels awkward. There's a rescue scene added to this where... They've got to free all these experiments, and it's not only um, humanoid-like beings or whatever the fuck. I don't know what they're made from. You, can, you don't really see if anything. And all the animals and rocket. You, you know, you're supposed to be uplifted and excited and, you know, pulse-pounding. You know, is it going to make it? Is this going to work? And I don't think all these ingredients flow together well. And I think that's going to be this you know, general end to this. I think there's, uh, well, the end to the thing, not that I'm, well, I guess I'm almost finished, but in a sense that the ending, the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, you know, who knows if there'll be more, James Gunn, doing the fucking DC thing. And I've always wanted the original Guardians, maybe Pepper's Men, they did here, because you got the crystalline guy. I saw the Easter eggs. And High Evolutionary feels wasted. What a great backstory you could have had. Counter-Earth. A counter-Earth? I mean, a another planet. It it Come on. That's a whole fucking movie. And that's the storyline you could borrow with Adam Warlock. You don't have to make him an idiot. He's the protector of counter-Earth or whatever. And you're trying to do jokey stuff. I, I sometimes question, like... An editor or the director's vision at the end when he comes in, what he sees, because this isn't annoying me uh, like it did in, you know, in the first two movies. I, am, I think I talked about it. I, I didn't want the original Guardians. I mean, I wanted the original Guardians as the first movie, but I enjoyed what they did, and I'm like, hey, they got me. Good, good movie, fun, whatever. Second movie, I would say little less, and then the third movie, I don't know, I think I would rank this as the, you know, my least favorite of the three, but Raccoon survives at the end, he's got Phyla, he's all little Easter eggs, and I don't know why they went with the, just the deep stuff into comedy, into action, rescue, you're trying to do themes, and Adam Warlock is just like a fucking child, kid, idiot, and the people who are working for High Evolutionary, I don't understand. There's no depth to it, and sometimes that can work. You can make a villain and not really have to know too much. And if you do have a basic elemental history of just life, <clears throat> you can say, okay, Loki, yeah, I know, I'm not God, you know, tricks the God, blah, blah, blah. And as good as Christian Bale was in uh, the last Thor movie, I think he was underused also. But I think it landed a little better. But it was too goofy and, you know, buffoonery. I think you gotta have someone come in and just, you know, smooth out some of these bumps and say, look, let's carry this. Let's end this quicker. We gotta bring Rocket out of his fucking coma way sooner. But, you know, two and a half hours in the last 40 minutes it's just bonkers stuff and it's you know it's got some great elements in here but 
as much as I would recommend this, as much as I know people have fun, you, your heartstrings are going to be pulled, and you can, that fun, to me, felt weird. I wanted to really feel the impact it has on a, taking an animal, a raccoon, evolutionizing whatever the fuck he does to them, and all the operations and metal plates in him, he's walking, you know, it's just heart-wrenching. And he's got his friends, and they become, it's, they do some shit in here that really makes you bond to them. And I'm okay with the aspect of him losing them and it being his catalyst for things and his escape and his ferocity with the high evolutionary. But it just, you're, you're putting that into elements that just boggle my mind. I mean, you're going from raccoon in a cage and he comes out and the high evolutionary is showing him things, but like, fucking why? This is batch 89, he's P13 something. You uh, obviously don't single him out for what he does get singled out for eventually, and why? Okay, so you're showing him the, what's going on, and what does he do this with every fucking creature in every batch he makes? He walks with them up to his experiments. And waits for one of them to figure it out for him. And he's screaming at the fucking thing afterwards. Uh, uh, Alright, so. The High Evolutionary walks, whatever. I don't know, walk, whatever. He gets um, Rocket when he's first created. And he shows him the back the fucking tank that he's growing these creatures in. And Rocket solves the problem for him. He's like, oh, it's because of the metaphor means fucking in the filter. Whatever the fuck he says. and Everybody in the room starts looking at Rocket. Like, what? Holy shit. The High Evolutionary is like, shock. Whatever, whatever, cut. The High Evolutionary drags him out of his fucking cell and he's screaming at him. How did you know I made you? What the fuck? Like, you couldn't have made this guy a stoic fucking burning intelligence that's creating fucking life from animals? And really make it feel fucking worthy of a villain? That's a shame. I don't care if he's not human. I don't care if you made him an elder of the universe. I don't care if he's a plant monster creature. I don't care. I just want to have fun and get immersed. And it, it's just throwing me off. How did you figure this out? And then, obviously from that, flashback, whatever, and when Rocket escaping, he needs... Ready? He needs P13, whatever, Rocket Raccoon's brain. Like, he needs it. Because apparently on his fucking counter Earth, they're selling meth. It's just like Earth, you know, in that sense. It's not a perfect society. No shit, Sherlock. But there's no depth, there's no rich history of, of development that I can associate with. What the fuck is he doing? Why is he screaming his fucking head off half the time? And this is before he got fucking mauled, obviously. He's got power. What is it from his race? Is it his suit? Fine. Whatever. I don't fucking get some of the decisions because they seem simple to me, like as a comic book fan. And even if I'm talking with my friends and we're laughing and they say, oh, you're crazy. I loved it. I'm going to say, oh, I enjoyed it, but, you know, this, this, and that. It kind of reveals itself, like, I think these are why elements of movies get such uh, one-sided type things. You love it or you hate it. I think this might be one of those movies. You might either just love it or hate it. I fall in between. I enjoy the ending of this trilogy for what it was, and it's more for, you know, Drax, <laughs> Nebula, Mantis, who's, I think, my favorite in this movie. I don't need to see the new Arrow guy see Yondu in the fucking distance to give him his courage and, that, and a little plot like that. I like what they did with the dog, Cosmo, and they showed how the duck. Fine. But it's peppered by Adam Warlock fucking running around, a cosmic being of no relevance and no depth. It's so annoying. 
when I did my review of uh, Marvels, um, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, the Mar- you know, MCU, I was disappointed that the quantum bands didn't look like the real quantum bands, and they weren't given to, you know, protect the universe, and in here they show Spyler Val, uh, who eventually gets the quantum bands after Annihilation story off. I want to... I want to be in that zone the whole movie where the Easter eggs and the action and the comedy really keeps you into the movie. You're laughing, you're like, oh, and then action's happening. It's obviously more complicated than, you know, I don't make movies. Uh, I have a friend who kind of does, but I can see the difficulty. All great actors, they all deserve their time, right? What do you do with Kimura? Oh, we'll bring her back and make her a fucking cunt the whole fucking time. And then eventually at the end, she comes through, of course. But she doesn't stay with him. She's got to leave. And then she's smiling and hugging the ravages at the end. I'm like, he didn't. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I know it's the writing thing. And who knows where the movie can go? Because at the end, they show Raccoon with his new guardians. And it's him, Groot. Right, um, Phyla, this little fucking monster, Adam Warlock, and the new Yondu. And they show, like, a stampede, like, oh, that's that could be the catalyst for the next thing. But you know, because it is group and whatever, whoever wants to come back is coming back. So, you know, if they have to go to Earth to pick up Peter Quill, it, it ends with, there's a through line with Peter deciding to go back to Earth. He's always been running. And it takes Mantis to let him see that. Well, through Drax, actually. Some great character in- interactions. Um, I wish the growth and the development of the characters wasn't peppered by crazy editing, decisions and themes and things that didn't seem put in the right positions at the right time. I, you know, for me, I would have gotten rid of, not gotten rid of it, but really front-ended um, Rocket story more and didn't have that kind of developing through the movie where the more was introduced and you got the chemistry all fucked up and the growth of certain characters, the action that's going on that's fucking amazing. It never lets down in that department. Uh, some of the music, like I said, got me here and there. But as in a big experience, this is, to me, another missed opportunity in a sense with the villain. The Marvel's been guilty of that a lot and sometimes it's that the it's at the expense of the heroes and the way you do that well is captain america went to soldier you know zemo uh, whatever he doesn't do a lot and he's an underused villain but everything works so well for me in that movie there's uh elements of civil war that are really fun and craziness and seeing just great fights and you can blend that with some serious stuff. Uh, at the end of the Infinity War, they get snapped, and is you know it's it's a hard. I guess it's difficult. As a movie, I would recommend this if you're into the franchise. If you're not, there's a little bit to catch up on, or you might be confused about, namely Gamora. The other interactions are really so well done. They, you feel like a real sort of family in that sense. And that'll be some of its strongest elements throughout the three movies for me, that you really do feel like, you know, Drax and Gamora and Nebula, or the original Gamora, that there is a bond there, and it is strong, and they are heroes, and the universe needs Guardians. And that whole thing works for me. Oh, Cosmo, I think he's one of the new Guardians too, the dog. Such great elements just not mixed together well you know you take the ladle your spoon you dip it into the sauce and it's just not done right but some people don't notice it and just say it's ready to go i think this is one of those not angry at the movie didn't like ruin the experience for me but you know when you're coming back and i'm opening the page and i'm gonna go you know read a little bit and decide to set up my podcast, I'm like, it sits with me. You know, Drax, Nebula, and Mantis probably 
for me, save the movie in that aspect. Like, am I that close to being annoyed where it's not such a good um, experience? No, I don't think I was super close to it. Again, fun movie, gets me going, but there's a lot of dark stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff that really is made to grab your heartstrings and pull on them really fucking hard in a great way. Really good. But again, it's a whole mix. It all comes together as it culminates in Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Two and a half hours. And I think the mix was a little off here and there. But Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I recommend it. It's a fun romp. Again, if you're not into the other movies, you don't know what's going on. There will be a sort of confusing aspect to Gamora, but everything else, you know, you don't need it. I think it just works. They're, they're that good together. You know, Chris Pratt, Batista, I even mean, Karen Gillan, man. She's she gets me in this one. And, you know, seeing her, it, it really works. You know, Mantis and Nebula. Who would have known? <laughs> I just, wow. Again, littered with little things that annoy me here and there. Adam Warlock, the high evolutionary, it just didn't work. It didn't fire on all cylinders for me. The rocket rescue thing is just heartfelt and is creation, the animals. So, you know, at the end, you can't help but smile a little bit as they, you know, try to rescue everybody. All in all, you know, good movie. Could have been amazing and just a really fucking top-notch movie. So I think it misses that mark a little bit from the mix. But I wouldn't be surprised if people just love the movie. They're just having fun. They're not, you know, thinking about it too much. And they're not watching every fucking movie referring to the comic book in their head you know i'm sitting with 20 something comic book boxes in my house although i stopped collecting around 2008 to 2012 i still am a nerd and watch the youtube stuff that catches me up on story arcs and you can read the comics here and there but good for everybody here you know seeing stallone again the interactions the two hour two and a half hour movie that's just not mixed super well but it's going to work. It's going to get you into it. What great chemistry. Some great moments. And there you go. Go see. Go, oh, go see. By the time this is out, it's the movie's probably way out of the movie theater. And I hope, you know, if this helps you in some way, I don't know. Is it a decision? If you first watch the first two, I mean, you're, you're obviously going to watch this in that sense. But for me, it was one that was left to the side for a while as i've done other podcasts and stuff where is my super interest in excitement so i will say that you know my love of the first one the second one having fun great elements in it in it i think it was put together much better than this one this one just went for the fences hit your heart action your adrenaline and just things that didn't make sense kind of annoyed me here and there but overall, I enjoyed it. Watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. All right, everybody. I want you all to take care, and I'll see and talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.